In this video, we're going to introduce the concept of groups, which are extremely valuable in organizing your learners and assigning courses. So I'm going to sign into the back end as an administrator and give you the view first of what the administrator sees, the experience there, how to set things up, what it means for learners. So if I go in here and go into users, then there's a section here for groups. And if I click on groups, then I'm able to set up learn dash groups. So you can see there's a test group there with a bunch of test data in it. Okay, what I'm going to do now then is create a new learn dash group and talk about what the group is and how to use it and things like that. So when you first create it, and I'm not sure why I scrolled down there, there is a space for a title, for some content, and then if we scroll down, got the ability to add courses to the group, add leaders to the group, and add users to the group. So let me talk about that a bit more. Um, first, all groups have to be named. And when you create a group, you can manage course assignments for all members of that group. So that means if you're adding 50 users, they're all part of one organization or a division or a client group or something it gives you a way to logically manage access for the entire group. So by adding users to the group down here, or via upload or however you're doing it, by adding them to this list, then these users get access to whatever courses are added up here. So if I add this course and I add this, let's say this earnest user, okay, if I add those, publish the group like this, then that means Ernest will now have access to the sample course because of the group association and the group relationship. It doesn't actually assign the user in the course. So if later on I decide I don't want this group to have access to this course anymore, I can remove it here and all of these people if they only had access to the course through the group, will no longer have access to that course. Now, of course, if, if they've been manually signed to the course, um, so you've added them to the course from the profile page or something like that, then you know changing their, their access to the group isn't gonna change anything if they're individually enrolled. But if you do a lot of work with groups and you're managing access through groups, it's a really easy way to uh, make sure that a larger set of users has access to the right courses instead of manually enrolling them and manually managing that access. What you can also do with groups is manage reporting for the users within it. So instead of running reports that show information for everyone in the entire system, then group leaders, which are set down here, can see reporting data, so information about course progress, course completion, you know, quiz scores. Um, if you're doing anything with Tin Canny X API, they can see that information. So these users then that are set here see all of the information then for this group of users. So it can really make it a lot easier if you work with a lot of client organizations to group their reporting logically, and especially if you want to give your clients access to reports for their staff or for their customers or something, whatever the situation might be, then by setting up group leaders, they've got a way to see the reports and see progress without having to give them you know, additional capabilities on the site. So they can sign in and they can see what users are up to. They can also work with assignments, things like that without seeing anything they shouldn't see. So it's uh, just another level of access to provide oversight for a group of users. Um, oversight both in terms of you know what they're doing and their assignments as well as reporting information. So groups are very valuable. We use them on the majority of our sites because usually there are a lot of users and it helps to have some way to organize them. So right now the page is pretty simple. When you're setting this up, all you really need is the group name. So I'm gonna call it group name A, just for demo purposes. This field does not need to be filled out. It's not used, it's never shown in the front end. We don't have anything that does show this. So this does not need to be populated. You do, however, need um, users. 
for it to be actually used. Um, so you would assign users here. There are other ways to assign them, but you can do it from here, also from a user's profile page, also by upload. So you want to get users into here. You probably want to add courses to the group. And then if you have people that you want to see reporting for, for this group, create them as group leaders. Now this is a little different and this is important to talk about. I want to talk about group leaders more. Before I do though, let me just go ahead and publish this and then I can talk a bit more about group leaders. These users are a completely different type of role. So they're treated differently than learners, they're treated differently than administrators. They're set up as users of the system and normally these users would be set up manually. So not via upload because that usually creates subscriber role users. Um, you'd usually create them manually, make sure they have the group leader role, and then once they have that role, that's how they show up in this list. So if you've got some users, you're wondering why they don't show up in this list, it's because they have to have the group leader role. And once that's all set up, so let me, um, let me set up a user with that role. So I'm going to actually, no, that's, I'm going to use this one, this user. So I'm going to, I've got that group leader set up. I've got a user in here. I've got a course in here. I'm going to save that. Now you go back over to your list of users. So let me go back into the list of users over here. So the one that I was looking at a second ago, um, I have lost. Let me uh, quickly find that uh, that user. So let me take a look there. Okay, that's what I wanted, group leader. This is one way to find it. I just did the search here. You could also, I could have just gone straight to group leader and found that group leader there. So I can, I wanna switch to this view just so you can see what group leaders see. So I'm now signed in because we have the, the switching uh, capability on here and I can you know switch back to my user. Um, Group leaders have access to a restricted view of the back end of the WordPress site. So when they go in here, they can see some, some dashboard information, which includes uh, this pro panel section from Learn Dash for a bit more information about users in their programs. They can modify their profiles and they can also go into this section. So they can get into e-learning, but what they see here is different than what you see here as an administrator. So I can see the two LearnDash groups that I'm assigned to. So the, I'm a group leader and I've added this user to two groups. And within those groups, I can see who are the users. So the one I just did was this one. So I can see the earnest user that I added. You can generate a report there. And then this, of course, is exporting course um, progress. So this is a CSV file for the um, for all the learners that are in that group and course progress within it. And this is the quiz results here. And you can see we also provide access to assignments if there are any and submitted essays. So that is where those would show up. That's really all that a group leader can do. So it is pretty restricted. Um, it is unfortunately in the, the back end of WordPress, so not the best user interface, but uh, it, it works, it works well, and this can be used to track progress for users in a particular group. So I'm gonna switch back now. So I am back in here now. What I did also wanna talk about in terms of groups is what else we can do with them. So we do have some customization options available through the toolkit and the toolkit settings, and I want to talk through some of those. So the first one here is dripping lessons by LearnDash group. What this lets you do, and maybe if it's easier if I show an example, if I go into a lesson here, when you're working with lessons, you can assign a drip date for them. So let me go in, and that just means when does it become available for people that are enrolled in the course. So if a user has access to the course, we can still control when they get access to the content. So what we can do here is we can say make lesson visible on a specific date 
or this many days after sign up. And then what would happen is when users see the list of lessons for this course, they wouldn't be able to go into this one until whatever date parameters you've set have been reached. So it's on or after that date. But you can see right now when I go into this lesson, it lets me choose that, but I'm choosing it for everyone that's enrolled in this course where maybe you're using groups to manage um, you know, like cohorts or classes or something who are going through the program together um, and need access to lessons on a particular date and you've got a couple that are running so you need different dates for those well by turning this module on then dripping lessons by learn dash group as soon as I do that let me save that change and go back here and reload this then what happens now is I can choose a learn dash group and I could say okay for this group so group name A then I want this date so this is when they should see it so I do have to update every time I'm setting a group or a date for a particular group I'm going to go back in and the drop down list has now been changed so that a date is now set for that group. So now I could say, okay, well, for, for sample learn dash group, I don't want them to see it until the end of the month. So I'll choose March 31st. Update that. And then when I go back in, then uh, drip dates are set for two different groups. So I can see here these are the dates. And if I wanted to reset that, I would just click save again and it would erase that. And you can see there's an option here for all other groups, which means anyone that's not part of these groups, when should they get access to the course? Or, you know, should there be a date set? Maybe there shouldn't be if they're not in one of those groups. So that's one of the modules. Um, other ones that we've got, learn dash group expiration. What we can do here, and this makes it really easy to manage like if you have somebody that's paying for a year of access or maybe an organization that's paying for a year of access or you want to give them a 30-day trial or something like that then you can turn on expiration for the group I can then remove course access for the group on a particular date so let me go back into a group then so you can see what I'm talking about I totally clicked the wrong thing so go back to users go back to groups and when I turn that on, you can see now there's this expiration date. So if I set an expiration date for group A, you can see by turning that control on, I've now got this expiration date option. I can set this to, let's say, March 5th. Actually, that's too soon. March 18th. And update that. So that's saved now. There's an expiration date saved. And you can see, okay, this is when they're going to lose access. What happens then? On that date, any courses this group has over here get removed so people can still sign in you you know the group leaders can still see reports but they lose access to all of their courses and you can also have this set up so that an email goes out uh, so that users are aware that they've lost access to their courses so that's one learn dash group registration uh, what that does is it allows when we go into here um, it adds permalink here so you'd see a URL here if you view that as an admin it gives you a unique registration URL there's a bit more to it you might want to tie it to a um, uh, you know form registration or some other registration method um, so there's more information in the knowledge base about that but what it lets you do is distribute a unique URL and if people register from that URL then they get added to that group so they don't have to know the name of the group. They don't have to enter any unique code or anything like that. They're just in the group if they register through that URL. So it makes getting people into groups very easy. And that's what that's for. Uh, this one is probably not that useful because you can see groups in user profiles anyway. This is just a different way of, of viewing that. Um, and that's really it for groups in terms of customization. So we definitely recommend that you give groups a try if you're working with a lot of users in your system, especially if you're selling to organizations. It makes things so much easier to manage, even if it's if it's for internal training 
Um, I see a lot of people using it to organize departments and access to courses and just any way there's a logical way to group things, they can be very helpful. Um, one note is there's no hierarchy with groups, everything's flat. So you can't say, you know, I want groups for all these departments and then I want like an executive or management group that has access to all of them. It doesn't work that way. You'd have to add them to all of the different groups as group leaders if you want people to have access and then they'd have to, you know, toggle between their groups. Like, um, I'm not sure if you remember, but on the group administration page, when sign in as a group leader, it lists the different groups. So they'd have to pull reports for each of the different groups. There's not a consolidated view in that report section. Um, anyway, I'll leave it there. That's hopefully a helpful introduction to groups and how to use them with Uncanny LP.